Amazon Web Services, popularly known as AWS or AWS Cloud. It's essentially a secure cloud service platform that offers compute power, database, storage, content delivery, and a whole lot of other functionality to help businesses scale and grow. They actually brought about a paradigm shift in the world of infrastructure as a service. So now you can have infrastructure and you can pay as you go. You can use only what you want, and then you don't have to worry about the reliability or uniformity of the service. So somebody who is having one server versus somebody who is having a thousand servers in the cloud would get the same sort of reliability, same sort of service across all of the regions. They also get the computing power, the storage, the networking, the database, as much as any other, irrespective of size and scale and region. Now let's look at something called AWS Global Infrastructure. Now this is what AWS is made of. So we have regions, which are nothing but geographical locations. And as of now, there are 16 regions. And you can see that they are spread all over the world. Now, each region consists of two or more availability zones. Now, what are availability zones? Essentially, they are fault-tolerance data centers, which consist of one or more facilities. This is where AWS would put their servers and storage hardware devices. And each region, as I said, would have two or more availability zones to help with their disaster recovery and fault tolerance and availability. They also have something called edge locations, which are used for content delivery. So the other part of the content delivery network, where you can deliver your content with the lowest possible redundancy throughout the big cities and all over the world. So the first question that comes to mind is, is AWS for me? And am I going to use servers and cloud? Am I going to use storage and cloud? So let's look at the use cases for AWS. And I like to call it AWS for everybody. So we'll look at the size of the enterprise, and then we'll look at the rules that we have around all of this organization, irrespective of if it's an enterprise, a startup, or a small or medium business. So let's say you are a big enterprise, and then, you know, your priority would be security, availability of service, cost cutting, resource optimization, faster deployment. AWS gives you tools to achieve all of this. If you're a startup, the first thing you would want is you want to scale up without paying up front. You want that elasticity to go from probably a few hundred users to a million users in a matter of minutes, maybe hours. And you don't want to pay up front for that thing. You can't very well do that. You also want an automatic service where you could simply focus on building your product and not the heavy lifting or shifting of managing something like databases or managing easy instance answers. You really don't want to do that. You want to spend all of your time in writing the code, in making that product beautiful, and getting it out the door as easily as possible, as often as possible. And AWS gives you the tools for doing just that. If you are a small or medium business, you would probably not have a very large team that would take care of all of those things. That could be storage, that could be security, that could be servers, that could be databases. And AWS gives you a host of managing services to take care of all of those things. And you have a budget. You don't want to spend more money than that. You want to know what is going in, what is going out of your network. AWS gives you tools to audit, to track, to budget your monthly costs, all of that. Let's say you're an IT manager. If you're an IT manager and your priorities are to get the work out the door as early as possible, to make sure that all activities that are happening in your account are recorded somewhere, that all the costs that is being allocated to your department is consumed in the manner that it should be, then AWS is for you. If you're a solutions architect and you are developing a solution for a huge enterprise, scalability, security, auditability, traceability, and cost are the drivers, then AWS is a platform of choice for you. If you are a system administrator and you want to provision resources, your hardware resources, your storage resources, your computing resources on the fly, then AWS makes your life really, really easy. Whereas if you are a software developer and all you want is your code to be checked and then released on the click of a button, you can very well do that. If you want to do something like distributed tracing to know what is going on in your microservices, AWS has services that will help you with that. 
if you're a tester and you are testing loads and loads of apps and you of course want to test on iOS, Android, and all the versions over there, then you might not simply have all of these hardware devices with you. And AWS provides a service where you can simply go and test your application on any number of devices with any number of operating systems. And again, it's all in their pay-as-you-go model. If you're a web developer or a database administrator, you would want to have a lot of services where you do not have to do the heavy lift and shift, where you don't have to work on managing the OS or, you know, managing the security patches. And AWS gives you tools to do all of that. They have hosts and hosts of managing services which are offered in software as a service model. And then all you do is run your code on it and put your data in it, and you don't have to worry about it. As an executive, if you are a CEO or a CISO, you're concerned about the security part of it. You're concerned about the scalability and the reliability part of it. And AWS gives you hosts of services which will integrate seamlessly into your enterprise's data center. So it's not as if it's all cloud or no cloud at all. And there are various services in terms of storage, in terms of connectivity, where you can simply plug in your data center with AWS, and then the data transfer would happen seamlessly, and of course, securely. As a CFO, you would want to keep your cost under check. You do not want to be surprised at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter. And AWS will give you billing by the hour and a billing dashboard with Cost Explorer, with budgets and whole staff reports that will make your costs very transparent. Which department is using a lot of costs? Or which department is over budget? Or what resources are generating most costs for my account? And you can segregate all of the costs across all of the divisions, across all of the resources, and you can provision them. You can reserve them. And if you know they are going to run in production, you can buy them for a period of one to three years, and then you can get a lofty discount of up to 75% on their on-demand price. If you're a project manager and you have lots of these resources, like a web developer or a tester or a systems administrator or a services architect working for you, then AWS, there can't be a better place than AWS. Because AWS gives you so many features, such as cross-account access, such as organization, such as structured advisors, such as resource manager, so that you know exactly what is happening in your AWS account or all of your AWS accounts. And if you're a network engineer, you can create your own logical network in AWS. You will have your own CIDR block, and you can have as many IP addresses as you want to create your network, and this will be your secure network. And you can connect it to multiple networks in the cloud, or you can connect it to your network on-premises, and it makes your life really, really easy. There is, however, one question that comes to mind when we talk about AWS. Does AWS have its own technology? Does it have its own product? How well do they really integrate with open source technology or open source products? Or I have licensed software. What do I do with them when I'm going to use AWS? Essentially, AWS seamlessly integrates with all the major open source technologies and all the major licensed software, such as Microsoft or Oracle or SAP. And for open source technology, you have Apache, Hadoop cluster, and you can have them in clouds seamlessly. In Memory Engine, they have Redis, Elasticache, Elasticsearch. Uh, you can use Visual Studio, Eclipse, Chef, Puppet, SharePoint. All these ecologies integrate really, really well with AWS. And in some of the cases, something minuscule is there but you don't have to worry about running the OS or operating the security patches for the software because AWS will do it for you. It just makes your tasks really, really easy on cloud because you don't have to worry about managing, but you simply worry about how you can make the best use of this resource. The same thing goes with languages. So there are developers who must be thinking, does AWS have APIs? How do I talk to AWS services? How do I integrate with AWS services? Do I have to exclusively use AWS APIs, or can I write something of my own? And what are the languages that all of these services support? There are a host of services that support pretty much all major languages. You have PHP, Java, .NET, Python, Node.js, Ruby, C Sharp, JavaScript, AWS provides support 
and SDKs for Android development, iOS development, and all of these languages as well. So rest assured that irrespective of the language that you are working for and the software that you are using, it will seamlessly integrate with AWS. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.